Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to a new video on the channel. And today, guys, I'm going to be doing an opening round review and a round one preview in the same video. So we're going to be pretty much, it's going to be a new thing for this year. I'm going to be doing an opening round review in the first part of the video and then doing my normal round preview in the second half or in the second part. So starting off with the opening round review and Sydney defeated the Demons by 22 points in the first game of the season on Thursday night. Stayed pretty close for most of the Swans did kick away in the end though uh, and they did play pretty well. Uh, but the Ds again, it was just their same story. Their defence held up pretty well but... Unfortunately enough for them though, it was just that forward entry kick and of course conversion goals behind just didn't favour them on Thursday night and that is why they lost. Friday night, Brisbane in the end choked a 46 point lead at one stage to lose by one singular point to the Blues. Unfortunately enough, bad news for both these two clubs in this game though, Kadeen Coleman and Sam Doherty both um, ruptured their ACLs and will be out for a long period of time. But the Blues, though, they did end up getting the job done in one point. Uh, by one point, it was an awesome second half for them and a flat one for the Lions. Saturday's footy action was Gold Coast and Richmond at People First Stadium on the Gold Coast. Well, the Suns won by 39 in the end uh, when it was Damien Hardwick taking the helm for the Suns for the first time against his former side in Richmond, and they won by 39 points. Matt Rao was so huge in this game, 20 clearances in a game. It was an awesome performance, and the Tigers were down by about 10 goals, and in the end, managed to make it a reasonable result for them uh, in Adam Uze's first game, but without a few big-name players. And then a Giants stadium. The Giants defeated the Pies by 32 points. Not all doom and gloom, though, for the Pies. They did win the inside 50 count in a few other crucial areas. It was just their accuracy in front of goal wasn't great, whereas the Giants was amazing, their accuracy in front of goal. And now we can go to the round one preview where I'll be previewing every game. So starting off on the Thursday night, Carlton and Richmond at the MCG, the traditional season opener to start the full nine game round season and Richmond will start with them they've got a huge booster in this game they've got Dustin Martin coming back in um, they've got Nan Curvis coming back in and they've got Tom Lynch as well they've got three huge names coming in to the team and of course the Blues are going to be without Sam Doherty in this one now I think this this is going to be an interesting game because it could not necessarily go either way but the margin on this one will be quite interesting uh, but Richmond will be hoping, and I reckon they'll get a better performance than last week. Um, but I, I, I think they will get a better performance than last week, but whether they can sustain it for that long will be interesting to see. The Blues last week, they started off the first half quite flat, but then the second half really got going and managed to absolutely destroy the Lions, the flat Lions in the end, and get to a one-point win. Harry Mackay also does have a goal-kicking routine now as well, which will make him feel a lot more confident this year. I think the Blues will win this game by 53 points. I think they'll just show their class. I think it'll be decent for most of the night, but I think the Blues can just run away. Friday night, Collingwood and Sydney at the MCG. Collingwood unveiled their premiership flag against the Sydney Swans. Sydney were great against Melbourne uh, last round, and Collingwood against the Giants. They were all right. They did win in a few crucial areas, but in the end, their defence just wasn't um, as good as the Giants' defence, and just a couple of little problems. But I don't think it's anything to worry about too much for Collingwood. I think they will bounce back in this game and win by 20 points. It, it could really go either way, though. The Swans are going to be, like, blossomed by their inclusions this year, and Brodie Grundy played really well last week, but I do think Collingwood will just get back to their best, especially at the MCG in front of a strong crowd. Saturday's footy action starts off Lesson and Hawthorne at the MCG, and this is just such a crucial game for both these two clubs in terms of their season. Now, Essendon, they went out throughout the offseason, and they spent big bucks to get players in, and those players have got some good talent about them and they'll definitely be looking to try and help them in 2024 when their expectation is definitely rising. They played pretty well for the most part last year, Essendon, but just had a late season slump. This year they'll be looking to go all the way though this season and play a full season, which for them and their supporters would be fine. That would probably be the expectation for them. And Hawthorne, on the other hand, they are a team which has lost players in the back line for 2024. However, they are going to be one of those teams who are going to be able to spring some upsets and all that. So the start for these two seasons, uh, the start for these two clubs to the season is going to be so critical. That's what makes this game so critical. I think the Bombers will win by 17 points, though. Now to NG Stadium, formerly known as Giant Stadium, will host the Saturday Twilight Clash between GWS and North Melbourne. North Melbourne have got a new North Ball game style plan, which is like a fast-paced game style. A few other clubs, uh, a few other um, sporting clubs around the world have also incorporated 
fast game styles into their game plan, and North Melbourne is another club to do that. They are going to have a big test to test their North Bourne in round one. It's going to be the GWS Giants, who are definitely one of the best teams in the competition, one of the premiership favourites after knocking off Collingwood last week at this very venue. The Giants played very well. All aspects of the ground is in great touch at the moment for GWS. And I think this will be a high-scoring game at NG Stadium, but I do think the Giants will get a big win here. I think North Bull will overall do pretty well in this game, but again, they're against the Giants. I think they'll just be too good and will get a 62-point win. Saturday night, GMHBA Stadium, Geelong and St Kilda. This is sure to be a, a, a very good game and a big game for these two clubs who are both going to be looking to make finals in 2024. And the Cats, very good at GMHBA Stadium. We know that they've been good there for a very long time. And this uh, this group of Cats that are playing at the moment have never, ever given up and they're still hanging around and they can still most definitely make a push and finish in finals for 2024. St Kilda, they've had a more run and dash throughout their off-season, uh, picking up a few really good plays in the draft like Darcy Wilson and then going and getting Riley Bonner in the rookie draft uh, or in like the pre-season draft is another big addition that can run and, and carry and Played pretty well in their preseason game against North Melbourne. Now, it's going to be a big game for these two clubs. I think Geelong, just because they're better at GMHBA, will get the win by uh, eight points. But I think it'll be a great game. Now, Saturday night, also, People First Stadium, formerly known as Heritage Bank Stadium, will host the Suns and the Crows Clash. This should be one of the most interesting games throughout the round. It could really go either way. Margin as well on this one will be quite interesting, but it'll be the Suns and the Crows. Damien Harvey is going to get a big test against a great forward line. In the Adelaide Crows, although it will be without Walker and without Thilthorpe, and whether Rank and Rochelle get more midfield minutes as well, will be interesting to see. The Suns' midfield did play pretty well last week, and their defence did manage to stop the Tigers quite well, and their forward line was on, and the Crows don't have the strongest of defence. So this will be an interesting game, but I have gone the upset tip here. I do think the Crows will get the job done by three points. Sunday's footy action starts with the Demons and the Dogs at the MCG. James Harms will play against his former side, making his Western Bulldogs debut. This is sure to be a cracking game. It could really go either way, and of course, you'd be thinking the Dogs will unleash Riley Sanders as well, who's got that real X factor about him and was a great pickup for the Western Bulldogs. Now, Melbourne, this week to win this game, they have to have that connection going inside 50. They've just simply got to, they've got to kick a winning score and they've got to be accurate, which just simply they just didn't do last week. And that is why they lost that game. Now, the Dogs and the Dees is sure to be a great game. The Dogs are going to be wanting to make finals after what happened last year, just missing out. I think the Dees will get a 12-point win, but I think there's going to be plenty to like about the Western Bulldogs in this one as well. Port Adelaide and West Coast is the uh, middle game on the Sunday, and it'll be Harley Reid's debut game, you'd think. First official game as a West Coast Eagle. It'll be interesting to see how he goes about it, how Port Adelaide go about it, and how he, whether he's targeted or whether he can just do what he likes. It'll be interesting to see because, again, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him, so it'll be interesting to see how his first game goes. Port Adelaide, we know they have gone and stocked up on rucks and uh, defence players throughout the offseason, getting Radigalia, um, Zerk Thatcher, Soldo, and Sweet. And their forward line, of course, is not too bad. And their midfield last year, Zach Butler's Connor Rosie. Can they continue on that good form as they did last year? I think it'll be a good game for Port Adelaide. A high-scoring one. I think they'll win by 60 points. But I do think Harley Reid will have a great game of this one in his first outing. Fremantle on Brisbane is the final game. Sunday night footy in the West. Brisbane choked a 46-point lead last week against the Blues to lose it. And Fremantle... There are plenty of young players all over the ground that look that are going to look to have great years. Luke Jackson, Caleb Sarong, Andrew Brayshaw, uh, Jai Amos. We know there's plenty of awesome players in that Fremantle list. It's just can they really uh, can they really get going this year and have a really good year? That's what's going to be key as to whether they can finish higher or just around that mid range on the ladder. And of course, Brisbane they're going to be looking to bounce back after last week. No Kadeen Coleman and a trip to the West with a relatively disappointed playing group. It will be hard. I think it'll be a good game. I think Fremantle could genuinely win this. I think they will have their noses in front at some stage in this game. I think Brisbane will be too good, though. Experience will win, and they'll win by 22 points. But, look, I think Fremantle will definitely play hard and definitely have a shot in this game. So those are my round one tips. I've gone Carlton, Collingwood, Essendon, GWS, Geelong, Adelaide, Melbourne, Port Adelaide, and Brisbane. But really, it looks to be a cracking up uh, round one. And 
we know round one always throws a couple of upsets or can throw upsets. So it'll be interesting to see. And of course, there'll be some new new game styles, new players uh, released and launched. And it'll be interesting to see what impact they have on these games. But anyway, though, that's going to wrap up today's video. Um, it'll be like this every week. So next week when I do the preview, it'll be round one review, round two preview. But anyway, though, thank you guys for so much for watching. Please do make sure to leave a like. And subscribe and hit that notification bell. See you guys and then miss another video on the channel. Thank you guys. All smart. Bye, everyone. Flame for the out.